The Costa Rica border case is a straightforward illustration of how to apply stakeholder analysis in formulating an implementation strategy. As the case explains, 15% of Costa Rica's total exports flow through the border crossing into Nicaragua at Peñas Blancas. The crossing is a narrow two-lane road that forces drivers to wait an average of 14 hours to pass, a delay that is particularly disadvantageous for exporters of perishable foodstuffs. There are numerous government checkpoints, customs, health, agriculture, and immigration, all of which must be done sequentially during the limited hours these offices are open. As a result, a secondary industry has grown up around servicing the truck drivers trying to cross the border, including the tramitadores, or runners, who move paperwork, customs workers, warehouses, food service establishments, and even prostitutes. Laura Chinchilla, the president of Costa Rica, would like to modernize the border crossing to reduce the wait time and increase the volume of commerce. This will have beneficial effects, in theory, on the economies of both Costa Rica and its poorer neighbor, Nicaragua and the reform has the backing of the Inter-American Development Bank and the World Bank. President Chinchilla's reform must begin with a stakeholder analysis to determine who supports her reform and who opposes it. There are a number of pro-reform stakeholders, including the exporters who want to increase their foreign sales, ProComer, the government agency responsible for export promotion, the World Bank, the IDB, even the truck drivers who don't like having to wait at the border. And of course, the consumers in Costa Rica who would benefit from expanded trade with Nicaragua. On the other hand, there are stakeholders who oppose the reform. These include the businesses in Peñas Blancas that have grown up around the inefficiencies of the border crossing, like the bonded warehouses, the customs brokers, the tramitadores. While exporters may want a more efficient border crossing, not all businesses in Costa Rica will necessarily be in favor of increased competition from Nicaraguan firms. Finally, inefficiencies at the border create opportunities for corruption among the different government agencies there who may therefore not want a better system. So President Chinchilla needs to increase the size of the pro-reform coalition and to figure out how to neutralize those stakeholders opposed to the reform. In addition, she needs a way of increasing the power of reform supporters. For example, Consumers in Costa Rica may benefit from expanded trade through lower prices and greater variety, but consumers are dispersed throughout the country and benefit only marginally. Unlike a customs broker, for example, who will lose his livelihood if the reform succeeds, consumers have a weak and dispersed interest in the outcome of the reform. So then, how does a reform leader build a coalition? Both resources and a communication strategy, the second and third items in the third circle, are critical. A new border crossing will be very expensive. Will Costa Rica reap the benefits of the 30-40 million high-tech plan that the IDB is suggesting? Resources may be needed to help those hurt by the reform find new jobs. Communications is critical in building support for the project. The president must explain why ordinary citizens will benefit from an expanded trade and how the country loses money from the delays at the crossing. A reform leader will try to mobilize consumers and perhaps even organize them. The case presents several different possible reforms, of which the IDB plan is the most expensive. We don't know, however, whether it can be implemented. The joint border crossing requires substantial cooperation from the Nicaraguan government, which has had a very rocky relationship with Costa Rica. If we decide it won't work, we will need to go back to Circle 2 and default to a less ambitious solution. Implementation is not rocket science. In a sense, every successful political leader in human history has carried out a stakeholder analysis, calculating whose supporters and opponents were and how to get around entrenched parties seeking to block the change. What we are asking you to do in this case is to carry out this analysis systematically and to do it before you decide on your top solution since implementability may affect the solution that you pick.